The modern world has brought with it some amazing, helpful blessings. Along with the positives, we are now experiencing a curse. A curse of drug misuse, addiction, overdose, and death. Despite popular perceptions, even casual drugs can have devastating consequences. According to Focus on the Family, and I quote, Today's anti-drug messages highlight some of them, referring to devastating consequences, but tend to focus only on the physical effects of use. The person who's asked Christ to be Lord of their life should know that drug use can damage their soul as well as their body. Close quote. Today's lesson is entitled, A Christian View of Modern Drug Use. What will you learn? Well, during this session, you will learn a definition of the word drug. We will examine some facts about recreational drug use. We'll look at the classification of different drugs. We'll look at the stages of drug abuse. We will also examine the signs of addiction and overdose. We will examine some statistics related to addiction, and then how to help those that we come in contact with who are drug abusers. You as a minister, and especially some of you who are youth pastors, will come in contact with people who are using drugs. It's a curse in our world, and my objective for this session is to help you know how to help them. Material from this particular lesson comes from several sources. Lillian White, Niagara Region Health, Talbot Recovery, Focus on the Family, and SAMHSA. For years, the conventional wisdom has been that alcohol consumed in moderation can have some positive effects on various aspects of one's health. Recently, however, a wide-ranging analysis concluded that there's no safe or healthy level of alcohol consumption. The study published in The Lancet examined data from 195 countries and concluded that alcohol is a colossal global health issue, contributing to millions of deaths annually. The authors acknowledge that moderate drinking may provide a degree of protection from heart disease and diabetes, but they concluded that the increased risk of cancer, injuries, and infectious diseases outweigh any potential benefits. This information comes from the Talbot Recovery Group. Now here are some observations. We live in a society that is utterly plagued by drug abuse. Within American society, a society that once sought to criminalize the sale of alcoholic beverages, we now find that alcohol is marketed and advertised most prominently. Alcoholic beverages are, in fact, drugs. Here is a definition for the word drug that's taken from Merriam-Webster. A drug is a substance recognized as an official pharmacopoeia or formulary, something and often an illegal substance that causes addiction or a marked change in consciousness. Here's a simple definition. A drug is a substance other than food which changes the way a person thinks, feels, and acts. A drug can enter the body by being ingested, smoked, injected, inhaled, or absorbed, for example, under the tongue or through the skin. Here's an overview of the issue. Just as there are Christians who have sought justification to drink modern alcoholic beverages, there are also Christians who seek justification to smoke marijuana, abuse prescription medications, and use recreational drugs. Recreational drugs. The word itself conjures up an image of a football game, a baseball game, or a basketball game, or maybe going to the beach 
or catching a movie. Recreation. Well, it's not harmless stuff. Perhaps that's why they use the word to link it to this habit. Recreational seems to be a positive word. But even marijuana, supposedly the softest of drugs, is more of a gamble than a game. The Bible teaches us in Romans 13, 1 through 7, these things. Every person is to be subjected to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those who exist are established by God. Therefore, whoever resists authority has opposed the ordinance of God, and they who have opposed will receive condemnation upon themselves. For rulers are not a cause of fear for good behavior, but for evil. Do you want to have no fear of authority? Do what's good, and you will have praise from the same. For it is a minister of God to you for good. But if you do what is evil, be afraid, for it does not bear the sword for nothing. For it is a minister of God, an avenger who brings wrath on the one who practices evil. Therefore, it is necessary to be in subjection, not only because of wrath, but also for conscience' sake. For because of this you also pay taxes, for rulers are servants of God, devoting themselves to this very thing. Render to all what is due them, tax to whom tax is due, custom to whom custom is due, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. The recreational use of cannabis for adults is legal in Washington, D.C. and 23 other states, according to M.J. Biz Daily. Marijuana is cur currently being advocated as an acceptable recreational drug. Furthermore, its recreational use has been legalized in the 23 states I just mentioned. The words recreational use are employed to promote the use of marijuana similarly to the use of the term social drinking to promote alcohol. 1 Peter 4.3 says this, For the time already past is sufficient for you to have carried out the desire of the Gentiles, having pursued a course of sensuality, lusts, drunkenness, carousing, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. There are several classifications of drugs. For example, legal drugs can be prescribed by doctors or other health care providers and are sold in stores. And then there are illegal drugs. That refers to drugs that are not prescribed by a licensed medical professional. The use of these drugs is considered illegal. Now let's examine some of these, care, these uh, classifications. Prescription drugs. The non-medical use of prescription drugs is taking other people's prescriptions just to get high. This is done without guidance from a doctor or a pharmacist. Drugs, including prescription drugs, have unwarranted and potentially dangerous side effects. Taking prescription drugs that are not prescribed to you can be just as dangerous as using illegal or illicit drugs or even street drugs. Some of these prescriptions are painkillers such as fentanyl, Percocet, Oxycontin, Tylenol-3, and all of these are highly addictive. Then there are designer drugs. Some of these are ecstasy, PCP, GHB, LSD, and others. Sometimes these are referred to as club drugs because of their use at nightclubs. They may also be referred to as date rape drugs because they can be added to a drink without changing the color or taste and can cause quick intoxication. There are stimulants. These speed up the function of the central nervous system. The drug user is more aware of their environment, and using these drugs may also cause changes in behavior 
restlessness and dizziness. There are sedatives. These are opioids, tranquilizers, heroin. Opioids are a type of medication that relieves pain. This type of drug is one of the most commonly found and used in the United States, Canada, and the world. It slows down the body and the brain function. The drug user is less aware of their environment, and using these drugs may also cause drowsiness. Then there are hallucinogens. They tend to cause us to have a distorted view and awareness of life. We see things or hear things that aren't actually there when an individual takes this drug. Individuals experience with hallucinogens what is often unpredictable, which can put them at risk for injury. Sometimes individuals may experience pleasant sensations and heightened awareness, while other times they may experience bad trips that include terrifying thoughts, anxiety, and paranoia. These drugs disrupt the person's ability to think and communicate clearly or even to recognize reality. Side effects include distorted awareness and perception. This can result in dangerous behavior. Depressants. Example of depressants, alcohol, tranquilizers. Uh, depressants slow down the function of the central nervous system. A drug user is less aware of their environment. These types of drugs have a relaxing effect and can slow brain function and physical function. Alcohol increases risk-taking behavior and leads to poor decision-making abilities. For example, risky sexual activity, dangerous activity that may cause injury. These effects of alcohol are also what make it so dangerous to use when driving or to use any sort of motorized vehicle after drinking. It decreases coordination, blurs vision, and slows reaction time, and it increases the risk of injury. Alcohol use during pregnancy may cause fetal alcohol spectrum disorder in the infant. This causes physical, cognitive, emotional, and behavioral development disabilities in a baby. Long-term consequences may include damage to organs such as the brain, liver, pancreas, and the stomach. The risk of cancer is also increased. Alcohol is a depressant. It enters the bloodstream and affects brain function. It decreases coordination, blurs vision, as we've said before, and slows reaction time. Alcohol can be addictive to many individuals. You might not have thought about putting tobacco on the list of drugs, but tobacco can be, of course, smoked in many forms, cigarettes, cigars, cigarillos, and it is used by many, many Americans and also around the world. Tobacco also comes in smokeless products, which are typically broken down into two categories, chewing tobacco and snuff. Chewing tobacco is shredded, twisted, or it can be uh, loose leaf tobacco. It's placed in the mouth between the cheek and the lower lip. It's occasionally chewed. The resulting tobacco juices is typically spit out. Here is another, vaping. This is the use of electronic cigarettes. It commonly is referred to as e-cigarettes or vapes. It uses a battery, heating element, and liquid containing cartridge. It creates an aerosol or a vapor. The liquid cartridge is filled with e-juice that creates an aerosol or a vapor. The cartridges come in different flavors, which may be appealing to young people. Vaping liquids typically contain a mixture of water, food grade flavoring, levels of nicotine, cannabis, and other 
ingredients. Electronic cigarettes may be perceived as being less harmful than normal cigarettes, but they are still risky. Many cartridges contain nicotine and the aerosol contains other chemicals that may be very harmful. Vaping happens when a person inhales the vapor from the device through the mouth into the lungs and then exhaled. Cannabis comes from a cannabis plant and it contains the chemical THC which is a mind altering ingredient extracted from the plant. It can be consumed in many forms including a joint or from a bong or a vape, a pipe, even it's edible. What does it do to your body? It increases the appetite, loss of coordination, a decreased concentration level, hallucinations are common, memory loss, lung disease, and even addiction. Marijuana is addictive, especially for those who start using at a young age, which increases their risk for addiction. As someone who slides down the hill of drug use, he tends to follow several stages. The experimental usage stage, alcohol or drugs are tried for the first time, often fueled by curiosity, sometimes motivated by peer pressure. There's the casual user. They have decided they enjoy being high but limit their use. Often they use only on specific occasions, such as holidays or birthdays. Regular users. When casual users become regular users, they can usually still function at work and school, but they are dangerously close to becoming chemically addicted. They may believe that they can stop using but find themselves unable to do so for any significant period of time. People around them begin to notice signs of usage. Chemical addiction is the final stage. Addicts are compelled to use, not for pleasure's sake, but simply to feel normal. Those who reach this stage often deny the seriousness of the situation even though friends, family, or co-workers recognize the problem. One of the risks of casual use is easy addiction. Some are going to get hooked the very first time they use it, and no one knows ahead of time his susceptibility. The best way to prevent addiction is never to begin, and I would encourage you as you deal with young people and young adults to encourage them never to be a user. Maybe you've heard this one. I'm not going to get addicted. I'm going to smoke a joint here and there, do a little ecstasy, kick back with some friends and have a beer. People may use all of these drugs recreationally and insist that they're safe but they ignore volumes of evidence to the contrary. Chemical addiction can happen, and it is serious. What are some of the signs of addiction? Well, changes in personality and behavior. Altered behavior, such as an increased desire for privacy, sometimes indicate an addiction. Bloodshot eyes poor skin tone, and appearing to be run down. Another thing is changes in physical appearance, such as wearing inappropriate or dirty clothes and a lack of interest in grooming. A lack of concern for personal hygiene can also be a part of the signs of addiction. Changes in daily routine can tip you off to addiction. Difficulties at school, disinterest in school-related activities and declining grades, poor work performance, being chronically late to work, appearing tired and disinterested in work duties, and receiving poor performance reviews. Changes in appetite, such as a decreased appetite, and also the associated 
weight loss that would come with a decreased appetite. There might be a noticeable lack of energy when performing daily activities. And here's another one. An unusual need for money. Spending more money than usual or requesting to borrow money. Issues with financial management such as not paying bills on time can be an indicator that someone is addicted. Changes in friends and activities. And then defensiveness when asked about substance abuse. Now what about some of the signs of drug overdose? Here are some of those signs. Nausea, vomiting, severe stomach pain, abdominal cramps, diarrhea, chest pain, dizziness, loss of balance, or a lack of coordination, drowsiness and confusion, and agitation. In case you are with someone who has had an overdose, it would be important for you to know some emergency procedures to follow. If someone passes out after using any substances, try to wake them up. If they don't respond, do the following. Check for a pulse. Make sure the person is breathing. Stay with the person and call 911. Notify parents or guardians as soon as possible. Never leave the person alone. Even if the person is not unconscious but is impaired, they must not be left alone because this increases the risk of injuries. During this time, do not force anything by mouth, no food. You want to do that to prevent choking. If possible, and the person is conscious, sit them up and try to get them to drink a little water if they willingly do it. Don't let the person sleep it off. They might be dead in the morning. In Galatians 5.20, we notice the word, witchcraft in the King James Version. The Greek word is rendered sorcery in the New King James, the ASV, and the ESV. I'm going to read that extended passage beginning with Galatians 5, 19. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's a very sobering passage of scripture for us to look at. The word pharmakia is defined by Thayer as the use of or the administering of drugs, poisoning, sorcery, magical acts, often found in conjunction with idolatry and fostered by it. Metaphorically, the deceptions and seductions of idolatry. Drugs can become an idol for those who worship at the feet of the high or the buzz that they receive. Now there's some statistics of interest, and let me share with you some of these statistics. In the U.S. alone, 18 million people abused prescription drugs. The source is WebMD. That's in a period of one year. More than 59.3 million people, 12 years of age or older, used illicit drugs in the past year including 49.6 million who used marijuana. Among the 138.5 million people who were current alcohol users, 61.6 million were classified as binge drinkers and 17.7 .7 million were classified as heavy drinkers. That's a high percentage, isn't it? Here's some more statistics. 
54.2% of prescription drug users get them free from a friend or a relative. Medical emergencies resulting from prescription drug abuse increased 132% over the last seven years, with opioid involvement rising 183%. You talk about a pandemic. By survey, almost 50% of teens believe that prescription drugs are much safer than illegal street drugs. Using drugs certainly has serious, both long and short term health effects. I want you to look now at this particular slide and read along with me. Prolonged use of substances may cause mental health problems, substance abuse, and addiction. It is illegal for those under the age of 21 to use, buy, or sell tobacco, cannabis, or alcohol. Alcohol, cannabis poisoning, or drug overdoses can be fate, fatal and often are fatal. The Bible says some important things for us to consider as we think about addiction. The Bible teaches us to keep our minds alert and clear. 1 Thessalonians 5, 6 says this, So let, let us not sleep as others do, but be alert and sober. The Bible teaches us to take good care of our bodies. In Romans 12, 1 and 2, the Bible says, Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Allowing our senses to be dulled, invites opportunities for the devil to take advantage of our weaknesses. 1 Peter 5.8 says this, Be of sober spirit and be alert. Your adversary the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Even with pain management prescriptions, use caution personally and Encourage others that you minister to to use caution as well. Christians helping drug addicts means that we understand the seriousness of addiction and how devastating the effect can be. You may have watched a friend or family member suffer and your experience has deeply impacted you. How can you help a drug abuser or someone who is addicted? Well, first and foremost, prayer. Before you do anything else, I recommend that you pray for your friend and pray for God's wisdom on how to help best in that situation. As you pray, believe that God will open their heart to receive the counsel and encouragement that you want to offer. Ask for wisdom to speak the right words to your friend. By praying beforehand and during this process, you are preparing the way for God to intervene on your behalf. And then offer support and share concern. Once you have spent some time praying, offer your support. Take your friend out for a cup of coffee or invite them over for a meal. Tell him you've noticed that he hasn't been the same lately and ask if he's struggling with something in his life. This less confrontational approach might prevent your friend from going immediately on the defensive. If this fails, you may need a more direct approach. If so, include family members or friends, pastors, and professionals in an intervention plan to confront your friend with the truth of his need. Ensure the intervention has recovery in mind, not confrontation and accusation. While you want to pull away or remain uninvolved, 
the loving thing to do is to take the extra time your friend needs during this season to show your support and your concern. We often forget that listening is a key aspect of providing support. You don't want to become a dumping ground for your friend, but you can take the time to listen to their story and their feelings. Christians helping drug addicts means your kindness might be part of the key that unlocks the door to their freedom. Don't facilitate your friend's addiction. Your friend may ask you for money or other means to support his addiction. You must share in love that you cannot help him destroy himself. Number four, encourage your friend to seek professional help. I underline this. Addiction is often very complex. It requires doctors and counselors and support groups on many occasions. There are many Christian services and support groups that specialize in helping people overcome addictions of all kinds. Offer to go with your friend. Make a referral. While fellow Christians have wonderful intentions and can provide you with support and encouragement, they are not experts. In most cases, the person might need to ask for professional drug addiction treatment from a program that understands their struggles. If your loved one has cancer, you wouldn't try to treat it all by yourself, would you? Intervention also requires experts to help if we have the best chance of success. So don't be timid. Make a referral. Help your friend find alternative activities. These can help him break away from friends or places that reinforce his addiction. Encourage a support group. Be prepared to release your friend. You are not ultimately responsible for your friend's recovery. The cravings of addiction can be overwhelming. The person struggling with it must want to be freed from it and be willing to work to do that. At some point, you may have to tell your friend you have exhausted all your means to help and you cannot continue. Make sure you point him back to God and other sources of help and offer to come back alongside your friend if he decides he really wants to be freed from his addiction. And then last, never stop praying, regardless of the outcome. Begin with prayer and end with prayer. Here are a few resources that you might take advantage of to help as you deal with those who abuse drugs. Alcoholics Victorious, they offer a 12-step program that integrates Christian principles and encourages acceptance of God's forgiveness. And then the National Clearinghouse for Drug and Alcohol Abuse Information. This is a service of the Department of Health and Human Services. It provides information and referrals upon request. Overcomers Outreach Incorporated addresses alcohol and drug dependency within churches. It offers a 12-step program, a list of local support groups in all 50 states, and coordinates seminars for churches and schools. Teen Challenge provides a broad scope of help and information in every area of drug and alcohol abuse. An additional resource is Celebrate Recovery. They help individuals deal with hurts, hang-ups, and habits. They have provided great help in many ways and they are hosted in churches. And this, is, again, is another wonderful resource that you might use. Now some concluding thoughts. Often a question regarding whether something is right can easily be answered by asking the question, what would Jesus do? What should our attitude be then? Do we will to do his will? John 7:17 7, says this, If anyone is willing to do his will, he will know of the teaching, whether it is of God or whether I speak from myself. And 1 Samuel 3, 9 says, And Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if he calls you, that you shall say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. 
We need to be willing to do the will of God. Do we will to do his will? If that is the case, and when that attitude is present, then there will be no trouble determining whether to misuse drugs or not. Would Jesus do it? Our Creator God established some principles, and they apply to the subject of drugs, alcohol, and addiction. Users admit to experiencing an ever-diminishing high. In other words, the longer they use a substance, the more difficult it is to reach that level of pleasure that they're seeking. Obviously, drugs offer no permanent pleasure. Meanwhile, God says that at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. Psalm 16, 11. I pray that God will use this presentation to help you in ministering to those that are enslaved to the vicious trap of drug addiction. May God bless you as you work with the individuals, whether they're young people or adults, to help them to gain victory in this area of their lives. This ends this presentation.